Hi everybody, in this video we will create some designs for Google Display Network related to Father's Day. Let's get started. As you see, I just created a main design for my Google Banner ad. It's a half page ad, which you can also see all the Google ad sizes on the right side when you select the artboard. In this design, I have the brand logo, I have a photo on the background, I have the product image on the right side, I have two text layers on the green background on the bottom of the design, I have the campaign details as a text in the middle of the banner design. Let's create different versions, create different layouts for this design for Google Banner Ads. But first, we have to start with assigning and defining the design element positions. I select the image here, going to the pin to edge on the right side and clicking the plus icon here. Now I need to define the position of this product image, whatever the artboard size is. In this case, according to my design, the product image always stays on the right side and it always sticks to the bottom. If I change the artboard size, it sticks to the right side, whatever my artboard size is. Let's get back to the same size again. I have a background image here which I want this image to cover the entire space. Now, if I change the size, as you see, the image stays there, but I don't want that. I want this image to fill all the space. For that, I'm choosing the image and be sure this, the fill option is selected because the fill option will keep the image inside the rectangle. I choose the fill and going to the pin to edge, clicking on the plus icon here, and I'm saying always scale with the artboard size and stay on top. Because I choose the scale option here, if I change the artboard size, the image also follows the artboard size, also reposition the image inside this rectangle. Now let's go back to 300 pixel and keep going. For this text, I want this to always stay on the left and center. Whatever my artboard height is, the text, as you see, stays on the center. Let's go back to 600 pixels again. If I change the artboard size from the right side, the text always keeps staying on the left side. But if you want this text to also scale up with the size of your artboard, you just need to select the text layer here and on the right sidebar, go to text options. If you go to text options, we just release a new feature called dynamic font size. So this automatically scales up or down your font size based on the text box size. Also, I am defining the resize layout option here, scale to the container. If you enable this option here, the text size will follow the artboard size. What I mean is that if I change the artboard size from the right side, the text size also keeps growing it's following the container size. And because I have enabled the dynamic font size, it's scaling up the font size based on the text box. Again, I'm going back to the 600 pixel width. Now applying the same for the text layers here. Again, I'm choosing the text, but this time I want this text to always stays on bottom and left. So the moment I define the position, the text always stays on the bottom. As you see, it follows the bottom line of the artboard size back to 300 to 600. I defined the position for this text, but I also want this text to grow with the artboard size itself. So again, I'm choosing shrink the fit, uh, the dynamic font size. I'm enabling this function. And also I'm enabling scale to the container. Whatever my artboard size becomes, this text will also grow with the artboard size like this. And also I'm using a green rectangle for the background of the text. Because I want to use a different color as the background color to this orange part, I need another rectangle as a background for the text below. I'm choosing this rectangle, and also I want this rectangle to scale up with the size of artboard. So again, I'm going to pin to edge, I'm choosing scale, but this time I want this to stay on the bottom, I'm choosing bottom option. So now whatever my artboard size becomes, the green rectangle also follows the artboard size and also it sticks on the bottom as you see again going back to 300 to 600 now we have the final element here which is the happy father's day text stays there again i'm going to the text options saying dynamic font size and also choosing scale to the container right now i just defined all my objects also, this should stay on bottom and left. Now I just defined all design elements positions based on the artboard size. If I change the size like this, as you see, all the text elements starts to grow. This green rectangle also scales up to the right sidebar, but the product image always stays on the right 
The background photo also fills the width of the artboard, also position the image automatically. We created an auto layout for our Google Display Network banner. So go back to Google website and see what is the other popular sizes. In this case, I'm going to create a 300 and 250 pixel version of that. So I'm just going to our, going back to Artboard Studio and pressing Command or Control and D instantly creates a copy for me and entering this size, 300 to 250, 300, 250 pixels. I need to change the position for this product image because I defined this as center, right button, but actually it should be stay on the center all the time. Again, I'm just making the height 600 pixels. And instead of bottom, I want this to follow always center, stay in the center. So now if I change the artboard size, the product image stays on the center, but because this image is a vertical image, the important part of the product image, so the logo and the product itself stays on top. Now, if I make this 250 pixels, I'm ready to go. I just created one master design. I just created a kind of a square version of the same design without wasting my time. So again, I'm selecting the artboard, pressing Command or Control and D, create another copy for that. I'm going for this size now, 336, 336. And as you see, the moment I enter the number and press Enter, it just changed the design layout. It scales up the font size. It moves the image right. It also scales up the font in the bottom. And what was the height? 280. And also I'm entering 280 for the height. Perfect. We created one master design and defined the object positions in the artboard, design element positions, and duplicated different sizes. Now I have three different Google Display Network designs. It's time to generate the same designs for different products. For that, I'm creating a table first. We have this image, and I'm just defining the table as a media and double clicking and selecting from the canvas. This is my product image column. I can also name this product image. Let's connect this to the product image itself. It's not going to change anything because we didn't still add other images here. For the photo, I'm just adding a new column and again, changing this to media and select from canvas and choosing this image. I'm just defining the design elements based on the data I create. You're going to understand why I'm doing this in a minute. I'm creating another column using the color function because I want this green color to be changed with the different products. I can just double click and choose this green for this color. Just turning this to format to color, just double clicking and pasting the text color because I may need to change the color text. So now I'm connecting this to the shape, also connecting this color to the text color like this also connecting the same column to the other text. This color column, let me move this here. This D column is affecting these two texts. This green, the C column affecting this background color, the green. This B column affecting the image. And this A column is affecting the product image. I want to connect the same properties to the other designs. So this A column, the product image also this. This product image also using this A column. Connect the color to the shape for this one too. And also I'm connecting the text color to the text elements. I can also connect table elements to several artboards. Now this table is connected to all artboards and design elements here. Now if I make a change, let's say I want to change this green to something else. As you see, it's instantly affecting the color. This way I can easily change and generate different variations, designs I just created. Cool. Just zooming out a little bit on my canvas, I already put my other product images right here. Right now we are making this product design. As you see, the same product, the same image, the same colors. This is kind of my mood board. Let's get into this product. Now I'm going to use this image as the main product image, and I'm going to use this photo as the background photo. Let's zoom into this product image. I'm just double clicking on that and getting into the cropping mode. Cropping mode helps you to crop the image like this. Okay, now I'm cropping the image 
And as you see, I have a white background for this product image. So I'm going to remove background function on top and it instantly removes the background, the white color for me. I'm just clicking done. And now I got a product photo without a background. Doing the same for the other product image right here. I'm just double clicking on the image and cropping image, selecting the image and going to remove background option. Again, it instantly removes the white background color for me. Now I'm going to move those images next to the table and my table is right here. So for the second version, I want to use this image. For the third version here, I'm going to use this image. So if I zoom into the table, you can also see the first image, the first version of the design includes this green product. The second version is this and the third version is this one. So I got those images right here just moving them to this part and this one. I got these two images for this gray product. I'm going to use this image. Just double clicking on the cell, select from canvas and choose the image. For the other product, for the third product, I'm just double clicking on the table again and opening the media picker and choosing now this image. Now, as you see, if I zoom into the table, this product is using this image and this product is going to use this image. As of the colors, I want to use a background color of instead of this green for that product, this product using this kind of a dark blue background. And on the other hand, this product is using a lighter blue for the color. Let me scale up the table to see much clearer for the background color, the second product, which means this product is going to use this blue, just using the color picker and clicking on the color. For this product, I want to use a darker color for from this part of the image. Now you got the point that why I just added another column for the text color, because I'm going to use a dark background color. I want to use white text color for this blue. Again, I want to use white instead of this dark blue. Now it's time to generate designs. I'm moving everything around trying to create an empty space for the generated artboards. Just being sure the product, all the table elements connected to design elements. I need to connect the B column to product image two like this. Now it's going to generate the designs on the right sidebar, selecting the artboard here and hitting sync artboards. And there you go. Now we have different Google banner designs for different sites with different layouts and with different product images and with different photos here. Yeah, this is how you create lots of several different variations for your Google display network designs in a minute with Artboard Studio's amazing automation features. Just click the link below and generate your own Google display network designs with Artboard Studio. If you have any questions, just let us know in the comment section below and take care. Bye.